Okay, in this video, I'm going to build the financial model from the last overview. We'll see if my dog barks again. I hope she... Well, it doesn't matter if she does. Okay. Um, here, here's one of the very first principles. You start with the closing balance, not the opening balance. So we're going to make the depreciation first. And I'm going to use the net plant. Now, a big subject in corporate models is that the... Uh, is the depreciation expense. Depreciation affects the taxes. Depreciation affects how you compute the uh, earnings for the terminal values and a whole bunch of other things. The second thing we're going to do is um, we're going to just get the capital expenditures. Now, in project finance models, I really love to put some of the inputs over here. In project finance, in corporate finance, they're generally all uh, stayed. Now, if we get the depreciation in the net plant balance, and this is not the correct and necessarily an even good way to do this, we'll just get it from downstairs, and then we can uh, put this plus this minus this. I'm using the positive con number convention, and now let's get the depreciation rate and take the depreciation as a function of the opening balance, not the closing balance. Now, I implemented the shift control R macro. It just didn't work right now. I had earlier put this in the file. We go to this and press run. And now we can just press shift control R. That's uh, in a different uh, macro. Now, the very, a very similar, we'll use a very similar thing for the debt balance, just go up to the balance sheet, find the debt. The opening balance is the closing balance of the debt. Now, this is the big difference. When we go to the new debt issued from the cash flow, we can't get these things. This is added debt balance when it's negative. So we have to get this straight from the cash flow. And then let's see how much debt is repaid. And the debt is repaid, reduce the debt balance. We reduce the debt balance when the cash flow is positive. So again, let's take the opening balance, add the debt, subtract the debt repaid, and let's try our shift control R again. And now on the interest rate, we're going to do almost the same as the depreciation rate. Here, this is a major assumption, another major topic in part four of the uh, book is resolving a circular reference. For now, I'm just going to uh, use the opening balance of the debt, and that resolves it sort of like we did the depreciation. So those are two very big issues. Now, the cash balance is really negative debt, just like negative net debt negative net <laughs> net, net debt on a uh, in a corporate finance and now we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did before with different line items let's find the new cash generated i think that's all the way down here and then let's find the uh, cash that we used cash that we used so that that's going to make cash go down and so reduced cash balance i almost should put this less reduced cash balance from positive cash flow something like that just so, so no, oh, no, I hope you didn't. Plus this, minus this. I'm going to have to switch off the video temporarily. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I think I just made an executive decision to finish this whole video in one go. Now we'll get the uh, interest income rate and then let's do exactly the same take the opening balance times the interest income rate so that's this it hopefully has demonstrated a few things number one you start with the balance sheet number two you use the opening balance number three we have 
issues with the debt and the cash balance. Number four, we um, take the uh, we we, we uh, uh, take the changes in the debt and the cash balance from the balance sheet. Now I'm just going up. Now I'm just starting to fill things in, except for the subtotals. Whoops, sorry about that. A mistake. I'm not swearing. Okay. We can take the interest expense we just computed and opening balance. Of course, we haven't finished this because we haven't uh, uh, computed the uh, cash flow yet. So there's our profit and loss statement. The real reason, well, we need that in a corporate finance model anyway. Now let's go up to the EBITDA. Let's go up and get our capita X. I suppose we should officially get that from here. Some people kind of have this little rule. You should always take it from the same source. And we have our operating cash flow. Let's take away our interest expense. And I think we're allowed to take it from here. Let's add the interest income. And then we can take the earnings multiplied by the uh, dividend payout ratio. Now, I think we should use the fact that we shouldn't let the dividends be negative, And we should use the fact that the maximum of any number or zero is zero when that number is negative. So that, that maximum just caps the thing. Now, after we do this, we can get the cash flow minus the, the interest expense plus the interest income minus the dividends. Ooh, positive cash flow. So what are we going to do with our cash flow? Well, if it's positive, we will reduce the debt balance. But if we, so let's put maximum of this number or zero. And now, if it's negative, we can do the same thing. My little trick is to put a minus of this number or zero. So if it's zero, it, if, the, if this number is zero, let's just make our EBITDA to be 20 for a minute. So that just makes that number positive. When it's negative, we make it positive. I undid that. And then our cash flow, after we see how much is reduced, is this plus any cash we get when it's negative from reducing the cash balance minus we take away. And then the final thing we'll just do is if this number is greater than zero, then we're going to... Uh, add to the cash balance. That's just where we put all the cash, like Apple does. And then we take this number, whoops, and we put a maximum, and we put a minus of this number, or zero. So this was really meant to, to show you how to use the maximum. Now, we haven't finished because here, what happens if we didn't have that much debt here? We better take the minimum of how much debt we had or the opening balance of the debt which was just fine in this case. And then we better do the same thing with the cash balance. Whoops, that's the debt. So we would never be able to use... Now we're going to... Another video is going to discuss what to do if, if we have a minimum cash balance little problem. But let's take the minimum of that or the cash balance, and then we're finished. We're finished with everything. Now, what we can do is one final little balance thing where we could take it from the balance sheet. Let's take the opening equity. Opening equity is closing equity. You notice we couldn't have done this equity balance calculation until we we had the, both the cash flow and the profit and loss. Okay, so we have to do it down here. And then here's the key. We can then just take an equal sign and let's use the closing balance of the cash. I hope we have this here. Uh-oh. And then we better take the, and I, look, I made a mistake. Oh, shoot. Because this, this reduced cash balance should have been this one. Phew. Very bad. Very, very bad. And I'm going to delete this and just put net plant because that's our, only uh, only thing we have is the net plant. And then we can press alternate equal and get this. And then we can go up to our debt balance and find our debt balance. 
use the closing balance and finally we put the equity balance I hope this works alternate equal now let's uh, how about this let's copy everything across all the way down oops oh I better put our subsequent cash balance here no I can do this ah do this oh sorry about that what a ridiculous thing to do okay we shift control R does that still work ah that shift control R ah what a macro that is I'll tell you and then we press shift control R it looks like we were okay in the first uh, uh, year okay and let's press shift control oh, and we were in, in same in all the other years and let's put a round of this one or or uh, three digits how's that and let's make that equal to zero and then shift control R and let's use the and statement and one of the best feelings in the whole world is getting this balance sheet to balance okay and I think that's it for the corporate uh, model that's it's got a lot of the principles of the corporate model in a very uh, simple thing and I'm sorry it kind of took a little bit long we're at 11 minutes that's a pretty long video so I'm gonna stop it now